storm of missiles. Tonight, Russia expands its attacks across Ukraine in the crosshairs now, Lviv, near the Poland border. The city hit with deadly missile strikes for the first time, killing at least seven people. The president of Ukraine now says Russia is beginning an offensive to take control of the eastern part of the country. Ukrainian fighters defiantly refusing to stand down. To mask or not to mask, that is the confusion tonight as a federal judge overturns the CDC's extension of the mask mandate on airplanes and public transportation. The judge is accusing the CDC of overstepping, but the CDC is pushing back, insisting the agency needs more time to study the Omicron subvariant now driving up cases. The latest confusion that has major airlines and the Biden administration at odds. Poisoned. A record number of Americans have died from drug overdoses during a pandemic, most involving fentanyl. Tonight, ABC's Bob Woodruff goes inside the deadliest chapter of the opioid crisis and talks to the faces behind the tragic loss of life. She had no idea there was fentanyl in it. No. She chose to take a pill, but she didn't choose to die. This Earth Week, we highlight the urgent mission to save what's being called America's most endangered river, the Colorado River, winding through seven states known as a lifeline to the south. What's causing the water level to plummet and how the waterway can be saved before it's too late. To look out here and think that this could all be lost if action isn't taken now. What does that make you think? Every day it motivates me to wake up and go to work. Shopping for love. Date night at Target sounds interesting, but what about a first date at the popular big box store? The romantic outing going viral, and did they check out with a relationship? I cannot resist, like, the possibility of a good story. Good evening, everyone. I'm Lindsay Davis. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Some turbulence in the friendly skies tonight with confusion over the federal mask mandate on airplanes and public transportation. A federal judge suspended that federal mask mandate today, saying the CDC does not have the authority and did not follow proper rulemaking. And that decision has left the White House scrambling. Tonight, the Biden administration tells ABC News the TSA will not enforce masks on planes, but the CDC still recommends that people wear them. The original mask mandate was set to expire today, but the CDC had extended it until May 3rd, saying that they needed more time in order to study the new Omicron subvariants. Cases are rising in 34 states. The largest flight attendance union is now urging calm, worried that their members could face violence amid the confusion. We have Dr. Patel standing by, as well as the answer to if he would feel comfortable going maskless on a plane. But first, Eva Pilgrim leads us off tonight with a surprising ruling. Tonight, masks are no longer required on planes and public transit after a federal judge in Florida overturned the federal mask mandate, saying the rule exceeds the CDC's statutory authority. The decision by the judge appointed by former President Donald Trump signals another sweeping change for Americans. I think it's for our own protection because obviously COVID is still going around. So if we have to do it when we're inside doors, it's fine with me. I think people are just so tired of wearing masks. <laughs> And so I think it's a good idea. The travel mask mandate was supposed to expire today until the CDC extended it for a fifth time until May 3rd, pointing to a wave of new COVID infections fueled by the BA2 subvariant. So this is obviously a disappointing decision. The CDC continues recommending wearing a mask in public transit. Tonight, the administration saying TSA will not enforce mask use in public transportation and transportation hubs at this time. The CDC recommends that people continue to wear masks in indoor public transportation settings. But Delta Airlines CEO Ed Bastian saying it's time to move past mask mandates. We've done it for two years and it's time to, uh, to move beyond that and, and now make that the responsibility of individuals. It comes as the battle over masks heats up all over again. The city of Philadelphia today putting its indoor mask mandate back into effect to curb a spike in new cases. Being careful. Yeah. And being careful is the good thing. It's just the best way to be. But some frustrated businesses and residents are now suing to stop the mask rule. People are just generally have had enough of this sort of government overreach. A little bit of confusion tonight. Eva Pilgrim standing by, joining us from LaGuardia Airport to help sort this all out for us. So, Eva, bottom line, what does this mean if you show up at the airport right now? What's being enforced? 
Well, technically right now, you do not have to wear a mask in the airport. But when I went inside just a short time ago and talked with a TSA agent, that information hasn't trickled down to the individual agents yet. The flight attendants union is asking people to, to give them some patience and to remain calm as they sort through this information. As you know, Lindsay, this information just came down just moments ago. So it's being spread and shared as we speak. Lindsay? People still trying to process the implications here. All right, Eva Pilgrim, our thanks to you. The Biden administration tonight says that they are disappointed by the judge's decision on the travel mask mandate. ABC senior White House correspondent Mary Bruce joins us now. And Mary, give us the final say at this point. The administration, are they planning to appeal this ruling? That is still an X factor at this moment right now, Lindsay. The White House, I am told by sources, they are still reviewing this decision. They are still assessing what comes next. And they haven't made a final decision about whether or not they will appeal this. But tonight, right now, the White House is urging calm in the nation's airports. They are still recommending that all travelers mask up, even though as of right now, it is no longer required on planes, trains, and another transportation hubs. I think the bottom line here is that the White House knows this is complicated, this is confusing. There are a lot of moving parts and they say they are working as quickly as possible to determine what exactly comes next. Lindsay. Appeals for calm and patience, both from the White House as well as the flight attendants. Mary Bruce, our thanks to you. Thank you. All right, we have someone now who can answer all of our questions here, clarify it all. Joining us now for more on when is the right time to mask is Stanford Children's Hospital physician, Dr. Alok Patel. Doctor, thank you so much for joining us. So regardless of what the courts decide, this mask mandate on federal transportation was set to expire on May 3rd. Would you personally feel comfortable being on a plane at this point without a mask? Well, Lindsay, it's good to be here. And I will tell you right now, in terms of my own personal health, I am not as afraid of being on an airplane without a mask. The reason I still wear a mask is because I have a young daughter. She's gonna be a year old this Thursday, which that is a good celebration, but she's not eligible to be vaccinated. If I was also immunocompromised, I would be scared to be on an airplane right now. People around me weren't wearing a mask, but I will still keep one on me. I will still be wearing one. I might be less scared in May, when we have a little bit more data about what BA2 is really gonna be capable of doing. As of right now, we just don't have all the data and all the questions answered yet. All right, makes sense there. So if you're in an environment soon, say on a plane, where you have a mask on, but others do not who are around you, is it more important then for you to wear a mask with a higher levels of protection like an N95 or a KN95? It is, but there's an asterisk there, Lindsay. You know, the studies have shown that when both people, if both people are involved in a conversation, you're throwing drop, droplets back and forth, and both individuals are wearing a high quality mask, such as an N95, transmission is going to be very low. In one study, less than 1%. It's going to be a higher, obviously, if you're wearing no mask or a cloth mask. If you're wearing yourself a fitted N95 mask, which remember, Getting fitted for an N95 mask is not an easy task. That is done with healthcare professionals in a hospital setting. So K95 is not going to be a perfect fit either, but there is still some level of protection. I just feel for those out there who have children under the age of five or people who are immunocompromised who are essentially being told to fend for themselves in this environment. And Philadelphia officials reinstated, as you know, their indoor mask mandate today. It's the only major city at this point to do so. Would you say that this city is ahead of the curve or are they being overly cautious? I think we'll know in two weeks, and I think that's a very important question we're asking. It strikes me as an abundance of caution, but I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing because we do know that hospitalizations are going to lag a rise in cases by a couple of weeks. So we'll truly know in May if we have something to be worried about with BA2. And Lindsay, hospitalizations and deaths are not the only metric because we still have to worry about transmission to those who are most vulnerable and long COVID as well. So hopefully we have some more clear data and we'll know if this was an abundance of caution or if this was the right move. We thank you for clarifying all of this for us, Dr. Alok Patel. Appreciate your time and insight as always. Thank you. Now to Ukraine, where President Zelensky says that Russia's battle for eastern Ukraine is underway. It comes as Russia is escalating its attacks on the country, including the first deadly attack on Lviv in the west, which until now had been a safe haven for those fleeing the violence. Meanwhile, the battle is still raging in Mariupol, with one group of Ukrainian forces refusing to surrender. ABC's James Longman has the very latest reporting from Ukraine tonight. Tonight, as Russia launches the biggest barrage of missiles across Ukraine in weeks, President Zelensky has announced Vladimir Putin's new offensive to take full control of the eastern Donbass region is now underway. 
Late this afternoon, Zelensky addressing his nation, saying, no matter how many Russian soldiers are driven there, we will fight. We will defend ourselves. The Pentagon tonight still assessing whether or not that major Russian offensive has begun. We've seen the Russians reinforce their forces there. They've added some battalion tactical groups into the region. So there is active fighting going on right now. This new video circulating online shows missiles slamming the western city of Lviv, usually a place of relative safety, though strikes deadly for the first time in this war. Seven dead, nearly a dozen injured. Russia claiming it hit more than 300 targets today alone. It comes as Russian forces could be on the brink of seizing control of Mariupol, where the resistance has been fierce. This disturbing video, which was released by the far-right Azov battalion who are fighting with the Ukrainians, seems to show one of their fighters climbing a wall and throwing an explosive towards that red van, marked with the letter Z, a symbol for Russian troops. It's unclear when this video was filmed. Holding Mariupol, critical for Ukraine, and these forces are all that's standing in the way of Russia's attempt to create a land bridge between occupied Crimea in the south and the eastern Donbass. Tonight, the first images of Russia's doomed flagship, the Moskva, which Ukraine said it struck with two missiles. The dramatic new video circulating online shows it on fire and listing in the Black Sea. It later sank. And across this country, heartache. Hello, Katya. I'm James. Katya is 14 years old. Shrapnel tore into her hip and wrist when a shell landed in her garden near Zaporizhia. Her grandmother, Alexandra, rushed her to the hospital. Many of my friend's houses were destroyed, damaged, she says. We live in a big village and there's so much destruction there. Russia says it's fake, but she says they are faking it. We are real people. Like Butcher, they're gathering evidence of war crimes here too. So this bullet went into a three-year-old? Yes. Interviews with the young survivors, bullets and shrapnel from young bodies collected and recorded. The doctor chokes back tears. 40 years of experience, he tells me, I've never had to do this. In so many parts of the East, Ukrainians face a terrible choice, to go or to stay. Like Natasha, who we met as she arrived in Zaporizhia with her son Ivan. <laughs> Leaving was safer than staying, she says. But where will you live? Where will you stay? My, ma my mommy. Your mother's here? My, my mama. Hello. With her mother, she tells me, who then suddenly arrives, overcome with the need to hug her grandson. <laughs> I have waited for this for so long, she says. You can just feel for those mothers. James Longman joins us now from Dnipro. And James, what more do we know tonight about Russia's offensive in Donbass? Well, Lindsay, this offensive doesn't necessarily happen in all places at the same time. There are different pockets of fighting in different parts of this country. And we know that Ukraine is keen to take the fight to Russia. In fact, in Izium, uh, just east of where I am now, we know that actually Ukraine has been launching preemptive strikes uh, against Russian troops. I was down at that hospital today. I was speaking to doctors down there. And one of them said, as far as he's concerned, the fighting began a few days ago in that region anyway, because he's been seeing more and more people come into his hospital with more and more injuries, especially children. And it does look like some of the help that Ukraine has been asking for has arrived just in time. Four plane loads of US military aid has arrived just ahead of Putin's new offensive. Lindsay. Cannot get enough help and aid there. James Longman, our thanks to you. And we turn now to the urgent manhunt in Pittsburgh. After the deadliest mass shooting of this Easter weekend, two 17-year-old boys were killed and at least eight others were wounded when shooting broke out during a party at an Airbnb. Police say that they are now looking for multiple shooters. ABC's Trevor Alt has the latest. Tonight, an urgent manhunt for multiple shooters who opened fire at a crowded Pittsburgh house party. He got a gun! No, y'all, he got a gun. Video from early Sunday shows the chaos at this Airbnb as police say 200 people, many underage, were suddenly surrounded by gunfire. That's shooting! Oh, my God! More than 90 shots fired. In total, 15 people hurt, 10 shot, and two teenagers, Matthew Steffi Ross and Jaden Brown, both just 17, were killed. To see this happen to him was really heartbreaking as well, you know, because he had a, a very bright future. Today, Pittsburgh Public Schools unmodified lockdown. No one's really safe anymore, I guess, no matter how old you are or where you come from. And this was just one part of a tragic weekend of American gun violence. In South Carolina Saturday, 14 people were hurt in a shooting at a Columbia mall. 
Then hours later, nine people were shot in an altercation outside a club two hours away. While back in Pittsburgh tonight, where the urgent manhunt continues, the police chief calling for a stop to this devastating trend. This goes back to having too many guns, too many illegal guns on the streets. More guns than people in this country, which is something that we continue to hear about. Trevor Alt joins us now from Pittsburgh. And Trevor, the shooting, of course, happened at an Airbnb, which has a ban on parties. What's the company saying tonight? So, Lindsay, we heard from Airbnb pretty quickly after this shooting, and they said they would be banning the person who rented this location for life. But we also heard from them once again just a few moments ago, and they now say they will also be pursuing legal action against this person. Lindsay. No surprise there. Trevor Altar, thanks to you. And when we come back, the dramatic moment a teen living with autism who's been missing for years is found. What his family is saying tonight. Our journey to the most endangered river in the country to see the efforts underway to revive it. Can you guess where this is? But up next, with fentanyl deaths skyrocketing during the pandemic, the debut of our series, Poisoned. Why have cases risen so dramatically? And what makes this drug so powerful? Stay with us. With so much at stake, so much on the line, more Americans turn here than any place else. ABC News, World News Tonight with David Muir, America's number one most watched newscast, now streaming on ABC News Live. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. You have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. The hottest news in daytime are happening right here. We talk about things on this show that people don't talk about. That I can't wait to see. Honest takes from strong women. We need all hands on deck, and we need it right now. This is the time to speak out. Unafraid to get real. We stick by our points of view. We're all seeing it differently, and that's the beauty of The View. And that's why the most watched number one daytime talk show is The View. Now streaming on ABC News Live. Is that the gun? That's not the gun. What is it? I won't ask you again, then. Are you a Nazi? <laughs> the deeper you go into black markets, you could be putting your life at risk. The darker it gets. Why hasn't anyone come out and spoken? It's about the money. That's all we do. Trafficked. New episodes Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Tonight, we now know how long one of the drug dealers charged in the fentanyl overdose death that claimed the life of rising rapper Mac Miller will serve behind bars. Ryan Rivas in federal court said he was merely a middleman and had no idea the counterfeit oxycodone pills that he gave another dealer were laced with fentanyl. After Mac Miller's mother read a heart-wrenching statement in court, a judge sentenced Rivas to nearly 11 years in prison for the death. Mac Miller is, of course, one of thousands killed by fentanyl in recent years in the 
numbers only continue to skyrocket. In fact, more than 100,000 died from the drug during the pandemic alone, and they are still counting the dead from that period. The victims are young, old, rich, and poor. This crisis is impacting communities across the country. Tonight, part one of a new ABC News Live series of reports that will run over the next few weeks. Our Bob Woodruff and team have fanned out across the country to see the crisis firsthand. His first stop in our series, Poisoned, is Nashville, where he learns what makes this drug so powerful. 911, what's the exact address of your emergency? I just came to check on my son. And uh, he is in here uh, sitting on the couch and he ice cold. I need the police and ambulance. His dad opened the apartment door. <laughs> he started screaming like I've never heard anybody scream before. What's your son's name? Okay. <laughs> My son Romello Marchman was killed through fentanyl poisoning. Did you have any idea what could have caused this at that time? No, um, I had no idea what fentanyl was. The truth is that very few have ever heard about fentanyl. Fentanyl is a complete game changer, 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. In the first 18 months of America's COVID pandemic, a record-shattering number of Americans died from drug overdoses. And we are still missing months of data. But we do know that most of those deaths involved fentanyl. A few grains of salt worth of fentanyl will kill you. While fentanyl has gotten growing attention in the world of music... Prince died of a drug overdose. Fentanyl. Rapper Mac Miller found dead with fentanyl. And in Hollywood... Michael K. Williams found dead in Fentanyl-laced heroin. It's now in your backyard, coast to coast. Fentanyl has become the norm here in San Francisco. Just my agency has seized enough fentanyl to kill the entire country. It is hitting every neighborhood. Upstairs? Yes. Yeah. Does, Does she use narcotics? Spring breakers rush to the hospital after taking cocaine laced with fentanyl. Just heard my wife screaming. She told me they had just died. America is being poisoned with fentanyl, and we don't even know. This is where Romello grew up. Definitely a lot of tourism here. Music City. The economy's doing well here. The real estate's towards the top. Despite the beauty and the music, this city, like so many others right now, is battling this crisis. Romello was a typical 22-year-old young man that loved playing video games. You know, he liked cars. He always had to have a fancy car. He was a young man. Like so many others out there, they are stressed. They are worried. The pandemic keeps them away from their friends. Uh, they can't go to school. One night during the pandemic, Romello decided to try cocaine. I mean, he got it from his friends, and it's the only reason why he took it is because he did get it from his friends and he did trust them. You know, if you take one line of cocaine and that's fentanyl instead, you have no chance. Silence broke. That very same summer here in Nashville, one of the city's beloved musicians, Justin Towns Earl, found dead, poisoned by cocaine laced with fentanyl. Last year, Tennessee had the third highest overdose death rate in the country. In the Nashville area, between 75 and 80% of our fatal overdoses will involve fentanyl at this point in time. My name is Betty Davis. My daughter's name is Frankita Davis. She died March 16th, 2021 from fentanyl poisoning. When Frankita was just 17 years old, she was diagnosed with cancer. She was in severe pain. The doctors prescribed her pain medication. Then one day, a friend offered her a pill that looked nearly identical. She had no idea there was fentanyl in it? No. 
She chose to take a pill, but she didn't choose to die. This addition of fentanyl yep. has changed everything. Yep. They might have a friend that says, hey, here's a pill, you know, just take that, it'll make you feel better for a little while. The friend doesn't even know what's in that pill, chances are. Fentanyl is one of the most powerful opioids ever created. It was originally made for sedation during surgery and to treat pain in the most dire of circumstances. But drug dealers and cartels learned that not only is it 50 times stronger than heroin, all they need to make fentanyl is a few chemicals and a lab. They don't need to grow poppies. They don't need to wait for the sun to shine. They can make this stuff all year round, provided they have the chemicals that are necessary. Just five years ago, overdoses caused by fentanyl were rare. But every year since, toxicology reports in Nashville began to show a trend, quickly noticed by one of the local coroners. All right, we're now pulling into the office of Candace Sexton, who's an expert on fentanyl. We've been told that she is the one who sounded the alarm about fentanyl when it started to emerge. So let's see what she has to say. 2014, 2015 okay. is when I really started paying attention. And you were noticing something different about fentanyl. Yes. 2019, 2020, 2021. This is Candace Sexton's growing list of people dying with fentanyl in their systems. Last year, I can't even put a staple through it, and I'm gonna need a binder before too long. In 2016, her office noted 102 deaths related to fentanyl in Middle Tennessee alone. But every year since, they've been nearly doubling. It was just mind-boggling. 2018, 348. 2019, 598. Uh, 2020, 1,023. When I say 1,023, that's 1,023 people that died with fentanyl in their system. And though her office is still counting, 2021 had nearly 1,200 fentanyl-related deaths. An office like that has been seeing drug deaths for years, but this was different, and it was a different magnitude. When the toxicology comes in, and you start seeing fentanyl, fentanyl, fentanyl cocaine, fentanyl heroin, fentanyl methamphetamine, um, sometimes even fentanyl cocaine, meth, and heroin all together, somebody needs to be aware of this. So you think 2022 will be even worse? We are on track for it to be worse. Yeah. All of us are exhausted. Have you run out of space for the bodies? We have. We have outgrown our cooler. Um, we have a FEMA trailer that they're allowing us to use as well um, for additional storage. They got these coolers sort of bracing for COVID, but got overwhelmed by drug deaths. So you got to store the bodies basically out here. This has only been within um, about the last year. I'll be honest, it keeps me up at night. And when this first started happening, It would keep me up. Who do I talk to? I don't, I don't even know who to go to with this problem. Who do I make aware? Who do I make listen? Look at the amount of people that are dying from this. We have to make a change. Fentanyl fatalities began to skyrocket nationwide when dealers started to lace fentanyl into the drugs they were already selling, like heroin, meth, cocaine, and counterfeit pills that look just like the real thing targeting addicted users and hoping to create new clients, in many cases, killing them. And they don't know that it's fentanyl in there. And they have no idea. It's a drug they've been taking for years. Exactly. The problem is that dealers are playing amateur chemists, mixing and measuring one of the deadliest opioids ever created. A few grains of fentanyl will make you high. A couple more will kill you. It's just so potent and so profitable. Dealers are seeing that this is something they could sell in all manner of ways and to, to all manner of customers. Some of those customers were like Romello, casually trying a new drug tainted with a lethal amount of fentanyl. That has exploded the crisis into a whole new level. But dealers were also poisoning their existing customers, those already living with addiction. This is a recovery clinic for women suffering from addiction. Hello. Phil Bogard has watched fentanyl take hold of Nashville. I just want to know, we'll go around one time, we'll do a little check. In 2018, 
I remember people coming in for heroin, and then they wouldn't test positive for heroin. They would only test positive for fentanyl. One day at a time. Jordan. Now, nobody's coming in saying, I'm, I'm here for heroin. People are walking in the door saying, I'm here for fentanyl. How many here have actually become addicted or using fentanyl? So all but three. There's really no good reason why I should still be alive. You overdosed with fentanyl. Mm -hmm. What was it mixed with? Uh, heroin. I've probably overdosed a couple of times. With fentanyl? With fentanyl. Did you know that it was in your heroin? No. And when fentanyl is added, users withdraw from their highs faster than with other opioids. If you do fentanyl, it's wearing off. In two hours, you're going straight back to get more. Yes. So it keeps you going back to them. They're making more money from you. Over 1,500 miles away from Nashville, a county outside of Phoenix, Arizona, this is what a fentanyl overdose looks like. When you overdose on it, your chances of coming back aren't really that great, actually. You have Narcan? Yeah. The antidote used to reverse an opioid overdose is naloxone, otherwise known as Narcan. If somebody is suffering an overdose, you just simply squirt this into their nostrils. Here, breathe this in. Breathe it in. This is a scene that is playing out across the country. Start breathing normal. I've had to Narcan two of my friends three separate times. Fentanyl is such a powerful opioid. First responders now often administer multiple doses of Narcan just to resuscitate one person. Most people need more than one Narcan whenever they overdose. There we go. That's the reaction I was looking for. She's going to be okay. You've never taken fentanyl before. This is our uh, overdose response program. Back in Nashville, there is a small team of only so five people monitoring this epidemic. So a lot of our overdose surveillance... We One of their main goals is to distribute Narcan in parts of the city that have high numbers of overdoses. We can identify hot spots of activity. Um, so we can look at zip codes that are hit particularly hard. It's remarkably similar to the way we've all become accustomed to tracking COVID. Which part of this map shows where there's been growth in the number of fentanyl? It's generally just been amplified over the entire county. So every direction, it's going. Everywhere except the wooded areas. We went to one of the hardest hit areas of Nashville. So we just stopped by this pharmacy here on the side of the road. We asked for Narcan, trying to get it. They used them as We're out of it. They said that they run out of them all the time. The pharmacist said this is a true sign what is happening in this neighborhood. And while on our drive. Look at the billboard right here up the road. Legit or counterfeit, one pill can kill. One stark warning to a city in crisis, a message Romello's mother has been trying to spread. I know of thousands through Facebook groups, literally thousands. That and lost somebody because of fentanyl. Yes, it's specifically for fentanyl. You're very much against even using the word overdose. Well, if you take too much of something, you overdose, you might or might not die. But once that fentanyl is in there, you know, if you get something you haven't asked for and then you die from it, that's a poisoning, which makes it a murder. Fentanyl poisoning. That is how these families describe their losses. I know my child, and I know that he was not an addict. This is my daughter's uh, obituary. This paper is all I have left because someone chose to kill my child. While paper is all she has left of her daughter, our new series, Poisoned, our thanks to Bob Woodger for that important look at the fentanyl crisis. Still ahead here on Prime, the man who finally got to meet the officer who pulled him from a plane with just moments to spare. The FDA investigation into Lucky Charms, and it is tax day, the unofficial holiday nobody likes. We take a look by the numbers. But first, our tweet of the day from Spotify, who gave us the heads up about a new Kendrick Lamar album set to come out in a few weeks. Black market, 
the darker it gets. Traffic, Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions. Straightforward reporting. No spin, no hype, no bull. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos, the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. We have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. Pat. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. Is that the gun? That's not the gun. What is it? I won't ask you again, then. Are you a Nazi? <laughs> the deeper you go into the black market, you could be putting your life at risk. The darker it gets. Why hasn't anyone come out and spoken? It's about the money, that's all we do. Trafficked. New episodes Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. These days, with so much going on, it's hard to keep up. While others are recapping yesterday's headlines, we're bringing you the right now. This is the busy border crossing. Steel barricades, another strike. The right now look at the day ahead, how it affects you and your family. Record high gas prices. The threat of cyber warfare. Is peace possible? World News Now beginning at 2 a.m. Eastern, followed by America This Morning. America's number one early morning news. Streaming here on ABC News Live. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. I risked my life. If I was caught, they would have put a bullet in my head. That would have been one of the most deadly acts of domestic terrorism ever in the United States. He put himself in jeopardy for us. Welcome back, everybody. It is a day dreaded by so many Americans. It is, of course, tax day. Let's take a look by the numbers. As of April 8th, the IRS says that it has processed more than 103 million personal tax returns this season. Last year, more than 169 million taxpayers filed individual returns by the end of the year, meaning that about 40% of 2021 tax returns are still unaccounted for ahead of tonight's midnight filing deadline. The vast majority, some 99 million of this season's returns have been filed electronically with about 53 million filed by tax professionals and some 46 million self-prepared online. For those who have filed, the IRS has issued more than 70 million refunds worth more than $222 billion, with the average refund clocking in at $3,175 as of the latest IRS data. The IRS estimates that 15 million taxpayers will request an extension to file six months from now. But for those who are not able to meet tonight's midnight deadline, remember that you do still have to pay what's owed now in order to avoid penalties and interest. With a shortage of IRS workers, the agency is still facing a backlog of 7.8 million returns still not processed from last year as of early April. That's partly due to outdated technology, which means the IRS is still processing paper returns by hand, but the agency does note that nine of 10 refunds are issued in less than 21 days. And we still have lots to get to here on Prime tonight. A California mother who can confessed to faking her own kidnapping and covering it up, pleads guilty. But did she give an explanation as to why? An update on that boat that's been stuck in the Chesapeake. And how about a first date in Target? But first, to look at our top trending stories on abcnews.com. at stake in our world right now we wanted to thank you for your trust and for making abc news america's number one news and thank you for making abc news live america's number one streaming news now streaming on ABC News Live, 2020, true crime, cinematic, real-life drama, stunning, the unthinkable, follow the clues, the hunt, true crime, 2020, now streaming on ABC News Live. National parks are incredibly safe places. A crime will happen. Hey, Mom. 
my mom. My wife had fallen. She in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Admit it. These days, what you need to know seems to change just about every day. What is it that you really want to know, need to know? To help you not just get through your day, but to make the most of it. Feel smarter. Feel better. Feel happier. Well, how about a third hour of Good Morning America? GMA 3, what you need to know. Now streaming on ABC News Live. It's all about you. I know what happened, and I'm not guilty. Why the fascination with criminal trials? Figure out what's really out there. She revealed she had murdered his family. I know in my heart that he did this. It's the time of suspicion. The ending's really tough. You don't know whether truth is going to be difficult to find unless you try to find it. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. As Russia's war on Ukraine approaches its second month, much of the strategic city of Mariupol lies in ruins. Vladimir Putin's force is appearing closer than ever to claiming the city as some 2,500 Ukrainian troops holed up in a steel factory complex are seeing supplies and ammo dwindle. Missiles striking the western city of Lviv, the blast once again killing and injuring civilians. The president of Ukraine, Zelensky, said Russia has started its eastern offensive. Sad day for the hip-hop community. Hip-hop pioneer DJ K. Slay has passed away. The artist's real name is Keith Grayson, and he died last night after a four-month battle with COVID-19. He worked at hip-hop radio station Hot 97 for more than 20 years. The station released a statement saying, in part, K. Slay was more than just a DJ. To us, he was family and a vital part of what made Hot 97 the successful station it is today. Our hearts go out to his family, friends, and fans worldwide. DJ K. Slay was 55 years old. Well, the FDA has confirmed that it's investigating Lucky Charms after more than 100 complaints that it's making customers sick. People have reported experiencing nausea, diarrhea, even vomiting after eating the cereal. The company says its own investigation found no evidence linking Lucky Charms to illness. Former Arizona Cardinals linebacker Kylie Fitz is making an early exit from professional football. Taking to Instagram over the weekend saying, due to too many concussions and the severity of my recent one, it is no longer safe for me to continue to play. In 2017, a study of 202 deceased football players, including 111 former NFL players, showed high rates of CTE, suggesting an association between repetitive head injury and CTE. In response to that report, the NFL released a statement saying the medical and scientific communities will benefit from this publication and that there are still many unanswered questions relating to the cause, incidence, and prevalence of long-term effects of head trauma, such as CTE. So Kylie, how did you make the decision that, that retirement was, was what needed to happen for you right now? It was a tough decision. I've been playing the game since I was six years old and due to my head injuries and just Ultimately, it felt like it was no longer safe for me to keep putting my body and my brain out there just for my health and for my family. Newly released body camera video shows the moment police officers near Park City, Utah, found a teenager from California who had been missing for nearly two and a half years. Morning. 19-year-old Connor Jack Oswald, who has autism, was sitting outside a store, cold and shivering. Police approached him for a wellness check. Is it him? A little bit older, but yeah. My sweetheart's life. Oh, my God. <laughs> 
This shocking footage caught on a police body cam shows a California Metrolink train obliterating a downed plane in January. The pilot pulled to safety with no time to spare. Quick-thinking, fast-acting LAPD officers saving Mark Jenkins' life. And now, a reunion. Jenkins meeting the four officers who saved him. Our station KABC there to document the emotional and unlikely moment. I told them I um, loved them and thank you for saving my life. In the moment, it, it was just... It was just, we need to take action. Fortunately, everyone made it out okay, so we're just doing our job. Go, 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 go. This morning, after 35 days stuck in the Chesapeake Bay, the cargo ship Ever Forward is back on the move. In new images from the U.S. Coast Guard, the Ever Forward finally sailing again after they refloated the 1,000-foot ship with nearly 5,000 containers on board. Welcome back. Today, a California mother pled guilty to faking her own kidnapping and then trying to cover it up. Sherry Papini stood by her lie for more than five years, but now finally admits it was all a hoax. Papini faces jail time, a fine, and has not publicly explained why exactly she made up the elaborate story. Here's ABC's Kaylee Hartung. For more than five years that she was kidnapped and tortured by suspects who were never found, tonight, Sherry Papini admits she made it all up. All we can do at the end of the day uh, is the right thing, and it is never too late to do the right thing. The 39-year-old who took an 11th-hour plea deal last week, pleading guilty to two of the 35 felony counts she's charged with, lying to federal agents and mail fraud. In 2016, the mother of two's case made for gripping headlines. Papini telling police she was kidnapped at gunpoint, tortured, and held in captivity for 22 days by two Hispanic women. But investigators uncovering she was actually staying with an ex-boyfriend and harmed herself to cover up her lies. The plea deal recommends 8 to 14 months in prison, plus more than $300,000 in restitution for the resources multiple agencies used investigating her case. I wouldn't call this her doing the right thing. I'd call this her last ditch effort to do the best she can for herself. Our thanks to Kaylee for that. Next tonight, as we mark Earth Week, a look at the danger facing so many Western communities that rely on what has just been named America's most endangered river. Kana Whitworth traveled along the Colorado River and has more on the fight to preserve a way of life before it's too late. Tonight, an ominous new report calling the mighty Colorado River America's most endangered waterway. Every single day we touch it, we see it, we know what these conditions are. We're not looking at graphs and models of what has happened in the past. You know, we're experiencing it on a daily basis. For five generations, Paul and his brother Doug Bruchet and their families have worked Colorado land. Their ranch sits at the headwaters of the hardest working river in the West. To look out here and think that this could all be lost if action isn't taken now. What does that make you think? Every day it motivates me to wake up and go to work. The mighty Colorado River, serving 40 million people across seven states and two countries, now tops the list as the country's most endangered, according to nonprofit American Rivers. Colorado's number one most endangered river in the United States of America this year because we're facing an unprecedented crisis in large part because of climate change and because of how fast this region is heating. It evaporates a lot of water. So we're faced with this, this new reality where we have to learn to live with less water. Water levels dropping 20% since 2000. The Bruchets forced to sell off nearly half their herd. In the past five years, the ongoing drought has caused our rangeland to be affected immensely. And so we've taken it upon ourselves to cut our livestock numbers in half to better treat the ground. Paul, now on the Colorado Water Conservation Board, is convincing nearby landowners they all need to take action to save the river, and they need to do it now. Ag is really important because of its large percentage of use, and, and many of the solutions for this will come out of the ag sector. One of those actions, installing cobblestone to keep the water deeper, colder, and healthier. It's called riffles. As part of one of the largest restoration efforts on the Upper Basin, you have installed five of these riffles right there along a 12-mile stretch? That is correct. 
raising the water table, focusing on the health of the Colorado River, and allowing irrigation for productive, profitable agriculture. It is this region's uh, adaptation to climate change. Working with conservation groups and Colorado State University, they're also planting drought-tolerant grasses for their cows and measuring the water use. So this is a meadow that you and your family rebuilt? Yep, rebuilt it about eight years ago, focusing on the type of grass that's grown, type of forage that's grown. In this meadow, as part of our study, this field produces more yield and uses less water. And this is a project that we're trying to figure out how to duplicate at scale. And how are the cows handling? Is it better for them? Do they like it? Significantly better. Um, the nutrition value of the feed is higher. Um, and we use them as a tool to assist us in managing uh, the soil. Do you feel like you're standing on the future right now? I do. But even in a good year, with more than 90% normal snowpack, the record drought is taking its toll. The spring runoff into the river, just about 65%. What we're enduring in the American West is a long-term warming and drying. And those dry soils then come spring, absorb much of the snowpack that in the 20th century would have just run off into the river. Major cities rely on the Colorado River for water. Denver and Boulder are 50% dependent on the system. Las Vegas, 90%. Experts say as the ground gets warmer and drier, the snow seeps into the soil or it turns into vapor before it can melt and run off into the river. Reserves in Lake Powell and Lake Mead hitting all time lows and triggering cutbacks throughout the West, leaving lower basin states like Nevada and Arizona in the midst of a water crisis. We saw that firsthand last October in Arizona. So this field we're walking by right here and the one over here to our left, these two fields on this farm will probably not get irrigated next year. So I'm going to lose You'll have nothing growing here next year? Most likely. 38% of Arizona's water demand alone is served by the Colorado River. And without it, there's a ripple effect. From November through April of every year, 85 to 90% of all the lettuce, spinach, broccoli, those types of green vegetables in North America come from Yuma. So it's hugely important to the economy and to those farm products. The current drought cutbacks have forced farmers up and down the Colorado River Basin to reduce the number of acres they farm. Can I see farming going away? Yeah, unfortunately. In this part of the world, eventually at some point. The old Mark Twain adage that whiskey's for drinking and water's for fighting over. Where do you sit on that? It often is that way. However, another blessing that um, my family has been able to experience, we're part of several partnerships that are so unique within this river basin. And it's a river basin in more danger than ever before. But up to this point, in your opinion, the conservation efforts that have really been put in place are a bit of a Band-Aid. Yeah, that's, ab that's absolutely right. I mean, um, making hard decisions is, is hard, right? I mean, bottom line is that we need to figure out ways to use less water. We don't have the river that we had. And Paul is putting in the painstaking work to win over his neighbors and preserve their way of life. What has that been like for you to sort of lead ranchers into the future, a future with a lot less water? It's, it's both an honor <clears throat> and also terrifying. Right. These are tough conversations when people realize that um, survival will require adaptation. Um, and I think that at the headwaters of the Colorado River, that's the position that we've been in for the last two decades. Without adaptation, we won't be here for our generation or the generation after us. $8.3 billion of the infrastructure bill has been earmarked for Western water. And all along the Colorado River Basin, they have hundreds of vetted, shovel-ready projects. But it takes a collective effort to put that money to use. And Lindsay, everyone I spoke with said time is running out. We can see that. Kana, thank you. Switching gears now, if you've been on the dating apps, you know that you can never know what to expect. But despite initially bonding over personal finance, one Des Moines, Iowa woman was surprised when a hinge match invited her on a first date to Target. Our Will Gans has this story. Going on a first date is stressful enough. Now imagine if nearly a million people on TikTok were along for the ride. I cannot resist like the possibility of a good story. My friends love hearing my dating stories. So I was like, okay, yes, I'll go. For Amber Smith, it's less because of who and more because of where. A guy from Hinge asked me on a date. 
Um, and here we are. This is, this is where you wanted to go. So I'm here. That's right. Looking for love in a Target. He kind of explained his reasoning. He was like, you know, we can still like get errands done. So at the end, you know, if we decide that we're not compatible, like we still like we're productive during this time. Amber and her date Joey spending more than an hour together wandering the aisles of their Iowa Target. Did you have a cart and he had a cart? How did it go down? Uh, so we, we didn't get carts or anything. He had, he wanted to get Easter carts for his family. And then he bought like some peanut butter or something. First date conversation flowing easily. You'd pick up random things and be like, oh, have you ever played this game? And it was a good time. Amber and Joey checking out and agreeing to check back in with each other in a few days. But less than 24 hours later, Amber's TikTok had blown up. I had to text him. I was like, do you have TikTok? And he was like, OMG, no. And I was like, okay, well, I have TikTok and I made a TikTok about our date and it's going very viral right now. The budding romance has the seal of approval from hundreds of strangers in the comments. Green flag, marry him. So did you not buy anything at all? I didn't. He, he bought stuff that he needed. The willpower it takes to go to Target and not buy anything. I mean, that's the real story here. Forget the date. <laughs> yeah, woman goes to Target, spends no money. And in my greatest Chuck Woolery impersonation from Love Connection, remember that show? We are happy to report that the couple does plan to go out on a second date later on this week. But this time, they're going to hit up a bar. Our thanks to Will Gans for that. And before we go tonight, the image of the day this is Henry Richard raising his arms there in triumph as he completes the Boston Marathon. The 20-year-old lost his younger brother, Martin, in the 2013 Boston Marathon bombing. As he approached the finish line, Henry paused for an emotional moment at the memorial when he completed the 26.2 miles. He ran into the arms of his parents there and Sister Jane, who lost a leg in the attack. Martin Richard would have turned 18 years old this June. And that is our show for this hour. Be sure to stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Coming up in the next hour, the battle for Ukraine's east is now underway, according to Zelensky, as that nation deals with the first deadly strike in a city that was a safe haven until recently. And an update in that horrific investigation into the death of a teenager at a Florida amusement park who slipped through the restraints as the ride was plummeting at 70 miles per hour. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched most trusted and streaming live to you anytime anywhere and free this is abc news live america's number one streaming news free to you 24 7. watch america's number one news whenever you want it wherever you are anytime abc news live streaming live and free on all platforms more americans choose abc news america's number one news source Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. The deeper you go into black markets, the darker it gets. Traffic, Wednesdays at 9 on National Geographic. He thought he was God. He's now one of the most vilified men in the world. He is the everyman. Zelensky is the Tom Hanks of Ukraine. The fact that a little nice Jewish boy is 5'7 is showing up this AGB agent in the Kremlin. What do you say to Americans who see Russia and you not only as a rival, but an unfriendly adversary? Two men at war. Which Vladimir will take over? The world is not going to be the same. Christopher Steele, the guy who picked a fight with two presidents, and he's lived to tell the tale. That now infamous dossier. Supposedly a tape showing prostitutes hired by Donald Trump urinating on a bed. It would be quite a tape if it in fact existed. I said take out the PP tape. It quickly became a question of how much of this was accurate.
This is the stuff of movies. A lot of this is the stuff of movies. The story of epic proportions. Phony stuff. It's a bunch of crap. It changed history. Hey everyone, I'm Lindsay Davis. Thank you so much for streaming with us. We're monitoring several developments here at ABC News at this hour. We start with the chilling murder of a mother of two in New York City. Orsolia Gall was found stuffed in a duffel bag in Queens, New York. An autopsy report reveals that she was stabbed as many as 60 times. Police believe that she was killed in the basement of her home and may have known her killer, adding that her husband received a text from her phone warning, quote, the whole family is next. Authorities in Florida say the operator of the free fall ride in Orlando manually adjusted 14-year-old tire Sampson seat, causing him not to be properly secured and to slip through the restraint. Sampson then fell to his death at the Icon Amusement Park in Orlando as the ride dropped at 70 miles per hour. The adjustments created a larger than normal gap on his seat. The ride is now closed indefinitely. Back on the bench, Supreme Court Justice Clarence Thomas heard oral arguments today at work for the first time since getting an infection one month ago. Now to the latest move over the federal mask mandate on airplanes and public transportation. A federal judge has suspended that mandate today, saying the CDC does not have the authority and did not follow proper rulemaking. Tonight, the Biden administration tells ABC News the TSA will not enforce masks on planes, but the CDC still recommends that people wear them. ABC's Eva Pilgrim has the details on the ruling and how airlines are responding. Tonight, masks are no longer required on planes and public transit after a federal judge in Florida overturned the federal mask mandate, saying the rule exceeds the CDC's statutory authority. The decision by the judge appointed by former President Donald Trump signals another sweeping change for Americans. I think it's for our own protection because obviously COVID is still going around. So if we have to do it when we're inside doors, it's fine with me. I think people are just so tired of wearing masks. <laughs> And so I think it's a good idea. The travel mask mandate was supposed to expire today until the CDC extended it for a fifth time until May 3rd, pointing to a wave of new COVID infections fueled by the BA2 subvariant. So this is obviously a disappointing decision. The CDC continues recommending wearing a mask in public transit. Tonight, the administration saying TSA will not enforce mask use in public transportation and transportation hubs at this time. The CDC recommends that people continue to wear masks in indoor public transportation settings. But Delta Airlines CEO Ed Bastian saying it's time to move past mask mandates. We've done it for two years and it's time to uh, to move beyond that and, and now make that the responsibility of individuals. It comes as the battle over masks heats up all over again. The city of Philadelphia today putting its indoor mask mandate back into effect to curb a spike in new cases. Being careful yeah. and being careful is the good thing. It's just the best way to be. But some frustrated businesses and residents are now suing to stop the mask rule. People are just generally have had enough of this sort of government overreach. Our thanks to Eva for that. Now to Ukraine, where President Zelensky says that Russia's battle for eastern Ukraine is underway. It comes as Russia is escalating its attacks on the country, including the first deadly attack on Lviv in the west. ABC's James Longman has the very latest reporting from Ukraine tonight. Tonight, as Russia launches the biggest barrage of missiles across Ukraine in weeks, President Zelensky has announced Vladimir Putin's new offensive to take full control of the eastern Donbass region is now underway. Late this afternoon, Zelensky addressing his nation, saying, no matter how many Russian soldiers are driven there, we will fight. We will defend ourselves. The Pentagon tonight still assessing whether or not that major Russian offensive has begun. We've seen the Russians reinforce their forces there. They've added some battalion tactical groups into the region. So there is active fighting going on right now. This new video circulating online shows missiles slamming the western city of Lviv, usually a place of relative safety, though strikes deadly for the first time in this war. Seven dead, nearly a dozen injured. Russia claiming it hit more than 300 targets today alone. It comes as Russian forces could be on the brink of seizing control of Mariupol, where the resistance has been fierce. This disturbing video, which was released by the far-right Azov battalion who are fighting with the Ukrainians, seems to show one of their fighters climbing a wall and throwing an explosive towards that red van, marked with the letter Z, the symbol for Russian troops. It's unclear when this video was filmed. 
Holding Mariupol critical for Ukraine, and these forces are all that's standing in the way of Russia's attempt to create a land bridge between occupied Crimea in the south and the eastern Donbass. Tonight, the first images of Russia's doomed flagship, the Moskva, which Ukraine said it struck with two missiles. The dramatic new video circulating online shows it on fire and listing in the Black Sea. It later sank. And across this country, heartache. Hello, Katya. I'm James. Katya is 14 years old. Shrapnel tore into her hip and wrist when a shell landed in her garden near Zaporizhia. Her grandmother, Alexandra, rushed her to the hospital. Many of my friend's houses were destroyed, damaged, she says. We live in a big village and there's so much destruction there. Russia says it's fake, but she says they are faking it. We are real people. Like Butcher, they're gathering evidence of war crimes here too. So this bullet went into a three-year-old? Yes. Interviews with the young survivors, bullets and shrapnel from young bodies collected and recorded. The doctor chokes back tears. 40 years of experience, he tells me, I've never had to do this. In so many parts of the East, Ukrainians face a terrible choice, to go or to stay. Like Natasha, who we met as she arrived in Zaporizhia with her son Ivan. Leaving was safer than staying, she says. But where will you live? Where will you stay? My, ma my mommy. Your mother's here? My, my mama. Hello. With her mother, she tells me, who then suddenly arrives, overcome with the need to hug her grandson. I have waited for this for so long, she says. Palpable pain and relief there are thanks to James Longman. Next tonight to a late season nor'easter moving up the coast at this hour. 12 states on alert from North Carolina to Maine for heavy rain, wind, flooding and inland snow. It is spring in Duluth, Minnesota, but you certainly wouldn't be able to tell it today. ABC senior meteorologist Rob Marciano is here now tracking this storm for us. Hey, Rob. Hi, Lindsay. Yeah, it's an impressive system. Even the trains uh, riding through the tracks here are, are tooting their horns and saying we don't need this snow in April. It's heavy rain for other spots as well, but the backside of this is definitely cold. Look at all the winter alerts all the way up through uh, much of upstate New York. Winter storm warnings are posted there. Coastal flood and rain warnings uh, along the coastline and wind. Yeah, we're going to have that as well. The heaviest rains right now are moving up through D.C. and Baltimore. Riding up I-95 will be in New York City before too long. The heavy snow is now pulling out of Detroit after dumping a couple inches there on this mid-April day. And our computer model is showing that low along the coast of the island going right up the Hudson River. So a messy night really for all of the Northeast. Heavy rain, flooding rains at times, Manhattan and Philly, I think. And then heavy snows one to three inches per hour at times. 50 mile per hour winds could bring some down some power lines too. Most of the precip, at least along the big cities, will be done in the morning, but the snow will continue to pile up. Six to 12, maybe more inches of snow from Utica, Binghamton, all the way through the Adirondacks. This is snow that is, for most people, not welcome in mid-April. Lindsay? No, not at all, especially two feet of snow. All right, Rob, our thanks to you. You bet. More than 100,000 have died from fentanyl during the pandemic alone, and they are still counting the dead. The victims are young, old, rich, and poor. This crisis is impacting communities all across the country. Tonight, part one of a new ABC News Live series of reports that will run over the next few weeks. Our Bob Woodruff and team have fanned out across the country to see the crisis firsthand. His first stop in our series, Poisoned, is Nashville, Tennessee, where he learns what makes this drug so deadly. 911, what's the exact address of your place? I just came to check on my son. And uh, he is in here uh, sitting on the couch and he ice cold. I need the police and ambulance. His dad opened the apartment door. <laughs> he started screaming like I've never heard anybody scream before. What's your son's name? <laughs> <laughs> My son Romello Marchman was killed through fentanyl poisoning. Did you have any idea what could have caused this at that time? No, um, I had no idea what fentanyl was. The truth is that very few have ever heard about fentanyl. 
Fentanyl is a complete game changer, 50 to 100 times more potent than morphine. In the first 18 months of America's COVID pandemic, a record-shattering number of Americans died from drug overdoses. And we are still missing months of data. But we do know that most of those deaths involved fentanyl. A few grains of salt worth of fentanyl will kill you. While fentanyl has gotten growing attention in the world of music. Prince died of a drug overdose. Fentanyl. Rapper Mac Miller found dead with fentanyl. And in Hollywood. Michael K. Williams found dead in fentanyl laced heroin. It's now in your backyard, coast to coast. Fentanyl has become the norm here in San Francisco. Just my agency has seized enough fentanyl to kill the entire country. It is hitting every neighborhood. Upstairs? Yes. Yeah. Pulse? Does she use narcotics? Spring breakers rush to the hospital after taking cocaine laced with fentanyl. Just heard my wife screaming. She told me they had just died. America is being poisoned with fentanyl, and we don't even know. This is where Romello grew up. Definitely a lot of tourism here. Music City. The economy's doing well here. The real estate's towards the top. Despite the beauty and the music, this city, like so many others right now, is battling this crisis. Romello was a typical 22-year-old young man that loved playing video games. You know, he liked cars. He always had to have a fancy car. He was a young man. Like so many others out there, they are stressed. They are worried. The pandemic keeps them away from their friends. Uh, they can't go to school. One night during the pandemic, Romello decided to try cocaine. I mean, he got it from his friends, and it's the only reason why he took it is because he did get it from his friends and he did trust them. You know, if you take one line of cocaine and that's fentanyl instead, you have no chance. Silence broke. That very same summer here in Nashville, one of the city's beloved musicians, Justin Towns Earl, found dead, poisoned by cocaine laced with fentanyl. Last year, Tennessee had the third highest overdose death rate in the country. In the Nashville area, between 75 and 80% of our fatal overdoses will involve fentanyl at this point in time. My name is Betty Davis. My daughter's name is Frankita Davis. She died March 16th, 2021 from fentanyl poisoning. When Frankita was just 17 years old, she was diagnosed with cancer. She was in severe pain. The doctors prescribed her pain medication. Then one day, a friend offered her a pill that looked nearly identical. She had no idea there was fentanyl in it. No, she chose to take a pill, but she didn't choose to die. This addition of fentanyl yep. has changed everything. Yep. They might have a friend that says, hey, here's a pill, you know, just take that, it'll make you feel better for a little while. The friend doesn't even know what's in that pill, chances are. Fentanyl is one of the most powerful opioids ever created. It was originally made for sedation during surgery and to treat pain in the most dire of circumstances. But drug dealers and cartels learned that not only is it 50 times stronger than heroin, all they need to make fentanyl is a few chemicals and a lab. They don't need to grow poppies. They don't need to wait for the sun to shine. They can make this stuff all year round, provided they have the chemicals that are necessary. Just five years ago, overdoses caused by fentanyl were rare. But every year since, toxicology reports in Nashville began to show a trend, quickly noticed by one of the local coroners. All right, we're now pulling into the office of Candace Sexton, who's an expert on fentanyl. We've been told that she is the one who sounded the alarm about fentanyl when it started to emerge. So let's see what she has to say. 2014, 2015 is when I really started paying attention. And you were noticing something different about fentanyl. Yes. 2019, 2020. 
2021. This is Candace Sexton's growing list of people dying with fentanyl in their systems. Last year, I can't even put a staple through it, and I'm going to need a binder before too long. In 2016, her office noted 102 deaths related to fentanyl in Middle Tennessee alone. But every year since, they've been nearly doubling. It was just mind-boggling. 2018, 348. 2019, 598. Uh, 2020, 1,023. When I say 1,023, that's 1,023 people that died with fentanyl in their system. And though her office is still counting, 2021 had nearly 1,200 fentanyl-related deaths. An office like that has been seeing drug deaths for years, but this was different and it was a different magnitude. When the toxicology comes in and you start seeing fentanyl, fentanyl, fentanyl cocaine, fentanyl heroin, fentanyl methamphetamine, um, sometimes even fentanyl cocaine, meth and heroin all together, somebody needs to be aware of this. So you think 2022 will be even worse? We are on track for it to be worse. Yeah. All of us are exhausted. Have you run out of space for the bodies? We have, we have outgrown our cooler. Um, we have a FEMA trailer that they're allowing us to use as well um, for additional storage. They got these coolers sort of bracing for COVID, but got overwhelmed by drug deaths. So you got to store the bodies basically out here. This has only been within um, about the last year. I'll be honest, it keeps me up at night. And when this first started happening, It would keep me up. Who do I talk to? I don't, I don't even know who to go to with this problem. Who do I make aware? Who do I make listen? Look at the amount of people that are dying from this. We have to make a change. Fentanyl fatalities began to skyrocket nationwide when dealers started to lace fentanyl into the drugs they were already selling, like heroin, meth, cocaine, and counterfeit pills that look just like the real thing targeting addicted users and hoping to create new clients, in many cases, killing them. And they don't know that it's fentanyl in there. And they have no idea. It's a drug they've been taking for years. Exactly. The problem is that dealers are playing amateur chemists, mixing and measuring one of the deadliest opioids ever created. A few grains of fentanyl will make you high, a couple more will kill you. It's just so potent and so profitable. Dealers are seeing that this is something they could sell in all manner of ways and to, to all manner of customers. Some of those customers were like Romello, casually trying a new drug tainted with a lethal amount of fentanyl. That has exploded the crisis into a whole new level. But dealers were also poisoning their existing customers, those already living with addiction. This is a recovery clinic for women suffering from addiction. Hello. Phil Bogard has watched fentanyl take hold of Nashville. I just want to know, we'll go around one time, we'll do a little check. In 2018, I remember people coming in for heroin, and then they wouldn't test positive for heroin. They would only test positive for fentanyl. One day at a time. Jeremy. Now, nobody's coming in saying, I'm, I'm here for heroin. People are walking in the door saying, I'm here for fentanyl. How many here have actually become addicted or using fentanyl? To all but three. There's really no good reason why I should still be alive. You overdosed with fentanyl. Mm -hmm. What was it mixed with? Uh, heroin. I've probably overdosed a couple of times. With fentanyl? With fentanyl. Did you know that it was in your heroin? No. And when fentanyl is added, users withdraw from their highs faster than with other opioids. If you do fentanyl, it's wearing off. In two hours, you're going straight back to get more. Yes. So it keeps you going back to them. They're making more money from you. Over 1,500 miles away from Nashville, a county outside of Phoenix, Arizona, this is what a fentanyl overdose looks like. When you overdose on it, your chances of coming back aren't really that great, actually. You have Narcan? Yeah. The antidote used to reverse an opioid overdose is naloxone, otherwise known as Narcan. If somebody is suffering an overdose, you just simply squirt this into their nostrils. Here, read this in. Breathe it in. This is a scene that is playing out across the country. Start breathing normal. I've had to Narcan two of my friends three separate times. Fentanyl is such a powerful opioid, 
first responders now often administer multiple doses of Narcan just to resuscitate one person. Most people need more than one Narcan whenever they overdose. There we go. That's the reaction I was looking for. She's going to be okay. You've never taken fentanyl before. This is our uh, overdose response program. Back in Nashville, there is a small team of only five people monitoring this epidemic. So a lot of our overdose surveillance... We One of their main goals is to distribute Narcan in parts of the city that have high numbers of overdoses. We can identify hot spots of activity. Um, so we can look at zip codes that are hit particularly hard. It's remarkably similar to the way we've all become accustomed to tracking COVID. Which part of this map shows where there's been growth in the number of fentanyl? It's generally just been amplified over the entire county. So every direction, it's going. Everywhere except the wooded areas. We went to one of the hardest hit areas of Nashville. So we just stopped by this pharmacy here on the side of the road. We asked for Narcan, trying to get it. We're out of it. They said that they run out of them all the time. The pharmacist said this is a true sign what is happening in this neighborhood. And while on our drive. Look at the billboard right here off the road. Legit or counterfeit, one pill can kill. One stark warning to a city in crisis, a message Romello's mother has been trying to spread. I know of thousands through Facebook groups, literally thousands. That and lost somebody because of fentanyl. Yes, it's specifically for fentanyl. You're very much against even using the word overdose. Well, if you take too much of something, you overdose, you might or might not die. But once that fentanyl is in there, you know, if you get something you haven't asked for and then you die from it, that's a poisoning, which makes it a murder. Fentanyl poisoning. That is how these families describe their losses. I know my child, and I know that he was not an addict. This is my daughter's uh, obituary. This paper is all I have left because someone chose to kill my child. Paper is all she has left. Our thanks to Bob Woodruff for that in our series, Poisoned. Still to come here on ABC News Live, Prawn, the extreme flooding that has left hundreds dead in South Africa, and the heartbreaking personal revelation from one of the most famous athletes on Earth. It was a scary time. In the 70s, you had multiple bodies showing up in Los Angeles. There were so many murders happening. You had to have a name for it, serial killer. There was a human head in there. This was premeditated evil. You have this clock. This person is going to do this again. It's me against the killer. Who's going to win? We'll see who laughs last. What came next was unlike anything they had ever seen. America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. National parks are incredibly safe places, but crime will happen. Hey, my mom. My wife had fallen in really critical condition. At that time, I thought it was just a tragic accident. There's still a lot of questions we need to ask. There were small things that didn't totally add up. This is two lives for Harold that have died now. I was shocked. Something's not right. Now streaming on ABC News Live 2020. True crime, cinematic, real life drama, stunning, the unthinkable. Follow the clues, the hunt, true crime 2020. Now streaming on ABC News Live. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24-7. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. 
Welcome back. We're tracking several headlines around the world. There is massive flooding disaster in South Africa right now. More than 440 were killed and dozens are still missing in the city of Durban and surrounding areas. Tens of thousands of people are now homeless after a year's worth of rain fell in just days. Authorities in that nation have called it the deadliest storm. Heartbreaking news from one of the most famous athletes on the planet. Soccer star Cristiano Ronaldo reveals one of his newborn twins passed away while his girlfriend was giving birth. Ronaldo says that the couple is obviously devastated, but that their baby girl who survived is giving them the, quote, strength to live this moment. And the special U.S. envoy for North Korea says that there needs to be a strong response to North Korea's recent missile tests, although they remain open to dialogue with the country. The envoy flew to South Korea for two days of talks. Experts believe that North Korea wants to advance its weapons arsenal in order to get concessions from its rivals. And still to come, how one mother got kids to share in an effort to combat climate change. It's tonight's Local Lowdown. Right now, with so much at stake, Sunday mornings, this is the place. Taking on all the tough questions, straightforward reporting, no spin, no hype, no bull. Thank you for making ABC's This Week with George Stephanopoulos the number one Sunday morning news show versus the competition. Welcome to This Week. Take America's number one news with you anywhere you go, anytime, free. Download the ABC News app now. Breaking news, exclusives, 24 Seven. There for you with one touch. The ABC News app. Download it now. She was diva. Drama. Money and fame. Shaw amazing. The prime housewife. Then suddenly, we've seen a lot of things on The Real Housewives, but we've never seen anyone be arrested. Unpredictable rich woman. Sign me up. Money. Ready for a little GMA ish promo? Okay, here we go. GMA 7A every day with Robin, George, and Michael. That's how you start the day. Boom! America's number one news, ABC News. Most watched, most trusted, and streaming live to you anytime, anywhere, and free. This is ABC News Live, America's number one streaming news, free to you 24-7. Watch America's number one news whenever you want it, wherever you are, anytime. ABC News Live, streaming live and free on all platforms. Finally tonight, to celebrate Earth Week all week on Prime, we'll be showcasing climate heroes stepping up to help make their community a more sustainable place. In tonight's local lowdown, Alicia Vitarelli from WPVI in Philadelphia reports how one mom is getting a whole bunch of kids to start early by sharing. Hey. Once you have kids, you really realize how much waste you create. A mother of two, Crystal Cunera created an earth-friendly response, Rutabaga Toy Library. And I love the idea of a toy library. Yeah, isn't it magical? You don't need to buy anything. We are a community and we share. So you borrow and then bring it back and then borrow again. No problem. Just like any library, members borrow everything from baby gear to developmental toys to dolls. And try things instead of buying them. So you don't have to buy toys, you can borrow toys. So smart. Can I show you all the toys? Cunera says the key is to start young, make retail recycling the norm. They want to give it back so they get m more toys, a new toy, new to them, and um, it really instills, you know, responsibility. About 90% of the items at Rutabaga Toy Library were donated. The whole idea of thrifting has a stigma to it, and so we're trying to, like, Break that. Sharing is great. Less waste and less clutter, a major selling point for parents. We also don't have that much space in our home, so it's nice to rotate toys without having to buy more or figure out where to put it. Perfect for city living. Totally. Happy birthday. Rutabaga also hosts zero waste birthday parties. Yeah. We've all been to those parties. We've all hosted those parties where you leave filling like three trash bags. Things that you literally just bought the day before. Balloons, paper plates, yes. goodie bags. Napkins. Here, every party item is either edible or reusable. So real silverware, real plates, you have real cups. Real cups, yep. <laughs> This is an old t-shirt? Literally, I cut it into a square. And you're using it as a party napkin? Yes. 
It's brilliant. So the decorations are also upcycled. We all love balloons. They're so much fun, but they truly are so bad for our environment. She rescues fabric scraps from thrift shops to create colorful streamers. How much garbage do you think that you'll generate by the end of this party? Not, I mean, none. None. And when you look at it, it, it doesn't look that radical. It doesn't look that different than the type of birthday party I would put together. The party favors also come courtesy of Mother Earth. So we'll paint sticks and make a mobile or throw around some paint and a pine cone in a bucket. There's music over there. The bag is a root vegetable. And our goal in all of this is to grow roots in our community and strengthen our neighborhood. Seems that root is strong and growing. I'm so excited when I hear from other people in other parts of the country who want advice on how to start a toy library. A seed she hopes others will plant in their own neighborhoods. What a great idea. Don't buy it, borrow it. Our thanks to Alicia Vitarelli for that. And that is our show for tonight. Be sure to stay tuned to ABC News Live for more context and analysis of the day's top stories. I'm Lindsay Davis. Thank you so much for streaming with us. Have a great night.